Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're doing the last one. Add axes to a visualization. A-X-E-S, that's just plural for the axis. So this is one right, right down here. So another way to improve your scatter plot is to add an X axis and a Y axis. D3 has two methods. There's axis left and axis bottom to render uh, Y axis and X axis res uh, <laughs> respectively. Here's an example to create an X axis based on the X scale in the previous challenge. So they've got the axis, they're setting the variable X axis equal to D3, and they're saying an axis at the bottom is equal to the scale. So you pass in the scale as a parameter to the axis bottom, and you can make use that to make an axis. Uh, the next step is to render the axis on the SVG canvas. To do so, you can use the general SVG component, the G element. The G stands for group. Unlike a uh, rectangle, circle, and text, the axis is just a straight line when it's rendered. Because it's a simple shape, using G works. The last step is to apply a transform attribute to the position of the axis on the SVG canvas on the right place. Otherwise, the line would render along the border of the SVG canvas and wouldn't be visible. SVG supports different types of transforms, but positioning an axis needs translate when, you, when it's applied to the G element. It's, it moves the whole group over and down by the given amounts. So here's an example. First, we make an x-axis that's set to D3, and we've, you're using the, utilizing the axis bottom function, and we're passing in the scale. And then we're saying, with our SVG, we're appending the G element, which just basically means a line, and then we are setting the attribute of transform, and that we're passing in a string, and within the string, we're passing dynamically created um, padding information to the string, and we're passing it in as a string. And then finally, we're just calling the x-axis, which I guess just renders it to the thing. So think about this kind of builds it, uh, sets up rules for how it lives, and then implements it. The above code places the x-axis at the bottom of the SVG canvas, then it passed as an argument to the call method. So it's passed as an argument to the call method. The y-axis works in the same way, except the translate argument is in the form of x comma zero. So this one's zero comma x. So they're saying that the y-axis will be x or the x-axis. The y-axis works the same way except for it'll be x comma zero. So because translate is a string in the ATTR method above, you can use concatenation. So here we're using concatenation. We're passing in two values. We're setting the transform value equal to a second value of translate zero comma this, and we're passing it all in as a string. Uh, so the scatter plot now has an x-axis. Okay, I'm gonna stretch this out now so it's easy to read. So a little bit more. Okay, the scatter plot now has an x-axis. So this is the x-axis. Um, create a y-axis in the variable named y-axis. Okay, so here we've got our SVG, we've got our scales, we've got our SVG, uh, We've got our circles. Here we have our the text for our labels. Uh, here we have the x-axis, which is complete. And so now we just want to add the y-axis. We want to create a y-axis in a variable named y-axis using axis left. So first off, we want to use D3, and we're going to say axis left, and we want to pass in our scale. Okay, now this doesn't actually get us anything because we're not rendering it to the form yet. We're not rendering it to the SVG file. Um, so now, here we've, here we've called the svg.append, so we've made the line. This is where we're actually building the x-axis. <clears throat> we applied the transform to here, and we want to call it here. Okay, so we're going to really uh, just copy the same thing. We want to have svg, and we're going to say append, and we're going to append a line. And then we're going to add to this uh, line, we're going to add an attribute of transform. And we want to transform attribute to the, x, to the axis of the amount of the padding units right and zero units down. How many units right and then down? So we're going to say, we're gonna pass in a string. We're gonna say translate. And in here, we're going to pass in x units up and x units down. Let's see, it should be 60. Okay, so it looks like we're just going to pass in the padding. Uh, padding. And we're going to add that here. We're also going to say 
Now we want to finish this string up because we're basically passing in a stringified JavaScript function. So, okay, and um, no, it needs to be. We need to also have a zero element here. It needs to have a zero because this one's zero, and then this one. So we're passing in a. We're kind of doing a string function, and we're passing in two parameters, the first and the second. So here, our padding is the first one, and our zero is the second. And for here, zero is the first, and h minus padding is the second. So yeah, if you were to look at that like in a node, right? If we were to run terminal node, if we pass this in. Padding is not defined. Oh, okay. So yeah, say our we know our padding is 60. All we're doing is making a string that says that. Um, so yeah, this is just we're string interpolation. Um, and then what do we have to do? We need to call dot call. We need to call the y-axis. Now it should pop up here. All right, we didn't quite get it right. So let's switch these numbers around. It looks to me like we might have these backwards. Um, so instead of having the zero at the beginning, we can go zero comma here. Padding. No, we want to have the padding. And then we want to say comma zero. Let's run the test and see what happens. Huh. That is strange. It doesn't look like it's working, but it is. Let me get rid of this and redo it. 60 and 0. The padding is equal to 60. 60 and 0. Append G. Scale X. Huh, weird. I mean, I passed the test, but it doesn't look right. Transform, translate, 0. We've got 60. Let's see here. The height. And the width, padding, 60. The y axis g element should have a transform attribute to translate the axis by 60, comma, 0. And our padding element is 60. So why is it going like that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that comma. Weird. That semicolon was what was throwing me off. Yeah, run the test. Looks like they passed. Now they pass for real. Um, one thing I would say in string interpolation, you can always do it like this. Um, and I think it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm not sure if you can do it in here. But instead of going padding like that, we can just go uh, money and then put padding in here. And that'll get us the same one, but it kind of makes it cleaner because this is kind of confusing to read, um, whereas this is the same thing. But they're both string interpolation. I think this is available in ES6. So if you wanted to, you could change this as well if you were trying to uh, refactor your code. So instead of doing it here, it could be like that. H minus padding. Yeah, that should work as well, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do it there. Doesn't seem to like it for some reason. And I think that's just kind of a weird, quirky testing situation. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is it for D3. Uh, this is a bit complex stuff. Um, uh, it's, it would be really cool to build applications using dynamic data because it would give you a, the capacity, really, once you've got something like this in here, because you've scaled it so it's got dynamic scale. Uh, uh, f format throughout the whole thing, you could just pass in, you know, totally big data sets and you're just going to automatic, it's automatically going to work for them, right? So like, you know, we, if you go one, one, you've got a data point at the bottom, you know, one, t one, five. So you could actually use this to sort of do some really interesting stuff with your applications, especially once you get into making API calls and things like that. So Anyways, that's it for the D3 one. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and um, we'll see you in the next, in the next section.